What's good, people? These that you're about to watch right now were originally posted on a channel called History Mystery Man. I thought that they were impressive. I love digging into our open wheel history, and I love to hear our legends and participants of open wheel past speak on what it was that they thought at the time, what they experienced, and how their lives are turning out. And some sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not so good. But I love the truth, and that's why that's all you're ever going to get on this channel. Enjoy these, and sub to History Mystery Man. Peace. I mean, do you, do you like spend time alone in reflection? Your father, your brothers, your, you know, the whole thing. Yeah, but it's, it's I mean, even though when Gary was alive, uh, I mean, he, he lived in Monrovia, and that's about 35 miles from here. And we didn't, I mean, we might go two months and not see each other. That's typical, though, of brothers. That's... And, and he was, Gary, Gary was a very unique person. If Gary called me, I mean, he just wouldn't go, hey, Merle, how you doing? You know, how's, what, what's going on? You. He was asking for something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he, he wanted was, his five grand back? <laughs> no, 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 I, I offered. Did I, you? <laughs> I offered the five grand. Oh, yeah, Lord. No, no chance. So, but, but it was, it was just, uh, uh, and it's almost like there, uh, he was so focused on being, a race driver, or, and I don't know if, if, I mean, it could be something in there that he was so focused on being better than his dad, and I, I don't think so, but we talked once, and and it was kind of in about what we'll do, this is right after we start having some success in racing, is that we'll win the first, whoever, Gary, Tony, or I, whoever wins the first race, that's not ours. That we we give that one to our dad. Of course. So the second win that he, any of us got was going to be the only one that we owned because the first one was going to be given to our dad. And uh, As it should be. Yeah, absolutely. But it just, uh, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't designed to be, but, but I mean, my God, what? What, what well, you wouldn't give to sit down with your father oh, or your yeah, brothers? I mean, this... This is a, I, you'll love this story. Now, I live on the west side of Indy. How close are we to the motor speedway? About five miles. We're really? We're that way. close, yeah. huh? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have so many feelings about me, my life, my father, my dad, and but th th this, and I just, I want you to imagine how you would feel. I go in West 10th Street, Okay, it's IU uh, Medical West. It's a brand new hospital to get my uh, radiation treatment. I go in 40, 43 consecutive weekdays. And there's th three radiation uh, people in there, you know, ladies between 45 and probably 25. I do, and, and after the second day, this one, the, the oldest one says, Bettenhausen, now you, you be part of the family, and I said, "Yeah, I am," because <laughs> because I told my dad, and he said, "Oh, it's, they got to be part of the family." So, yes, yeah, so I'm Merle. I'm the only, you know, the, the, I'm the only one alive now. Gary, Gary died in seventy, or excuse me, in uh, in fourteen, and and Tony died in two thousand. And so anyway, so I'm uh, <laughs> doing treatments, and then they started asking me more questions. So I I took a book in, and I gave him to all the technicians and the nurses and and they could take it home and their dad could see it and everything else and so and you you, you go in there and you lay in the, under this machine so anyway it takes about eight or ten minutes each day and and i get down now we've talked about the racing and so on and so forth and so i get i get down and i'm pulling my pants up and the the, the 45 year old girls she goes to me she goes the paparazzi caught up to you, Merle. <laughs> 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 and 
And I pulled my pants up. I said, what? She said, the paparazzi is going so, so I'm pulling my pants up. And, and I remembered there was a new guy that came in the little waiting room that we, we sat in. And he put a mask on. You can't recognize anybody anymore. And uh, he said, yeah, we've got a new customer, and he's coming in next. And he said that he, he saw you uh, and thought it was you. I said, well, I'll introduce myself. So I go out there, and I say hello to him. And he goes, hi, Merle. He said, uh, I thought that was you in the waiting room here, but, uh, but yeah, I'm part of the Indy 500's Old Timers Club. <laughs> I've seen you in the Old Timers room. And, and he goes, will you, will you sign my book tomorrow if I bring it in? And I said, oh, sure. So, 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 I, you know, so here, here I go. I'm 77 years old now. My daddy died 59 years ago. Gary's gone six years, Tony's gone 20 years. And I'm, I'm the last man standing. And the, someone asked me to autograph a book. So I come in the next day, and the guy's got the hung this Bettenhausen book. He opens it up, and there's Gary's autograph, and Tony's autograph. Wow. And now imagine how you would feel. And I, and I just made the statement. I said, here's my daddy. Died when he was 44. And he's going, you know, all that discipline probably worked pretty good. My kids have kept me alive for 59 years. And, and I mean, and it, it, I, I'm so honored. I'm so humbled, and and I I tell everybody I said, when you look at me, there you don't see me. I represent four people right now. I represent my dad over here, and Gary and Tony over here, and so I've got to represent four Bettenhausens at once now. I can see it and feel it, all that in you. I can see that representation. I, and. And it, I mean, I could, I could, I could start crying now. And it just, it so, it so humbles me. I mean, I don't ever try to be any better than anybody or, or any different than anybody. And, but it, it's just, it's such an honor to think. And it's like, I think of what my dad's thinking now. I did a pretty good job raising those kids. They you kept, know he is. They kept me alive for 59 years. And I'm still going. And we're going to keep that name alive for many more decades to come, and that's part of the reason I'm here. No, no, I want to tell you just a quick story. We're, i got to get my, my, my scrapbook. So it was, I remember this like it was yesterday. It was Terre Haute, the Terre Haute Action Track. About 1971, mm -hmm. you were racing that day as your brother Gary was, USAC Sprint Car Race, and you didn't know me. I was just some little kid, and... Uh, like yesterday, we were on the front stretch. The race is over. It's still light out. You got your leg up on a trailer. There's a sprint car on the back. I don't even remember if it was yours. You were trying to have a conversation with another guy, and I wouldn't leave you alone. <laughs> I just, and finally you succumb. <laughs> you finally gave in, and I, you know, and you you paid attention to me is where I'm going, and you had a really a conversation that was probably about five minutes with me because you knew I wasn't going to leave you alone. And you finally said, hey, this little kid here, I got to do the right thing. And, and I got to talk to this kid. And you talked to me and talked to me. And we laughed and you joked and you pulled my head over my face. And it was one of my greatest moments as, as youth. As a little kid, you don't forget those things. And I left that conversation that day. We drove all night. It was Sunday. They raced at Terre Haute on Sundays. And I left there thinking that I was Merle Bettenhausen's best friend. Wow. <laughs> and I went home and I told everybody at school that I am now Merle Bettenhausen's <laughs> best friend. And in my mind, I guess I was. But it was, and that's what endeared me to you so many years, for so many years, 
uh, because of, and, and I never got that from Gary. Gary was always too focused, but right. you made time for me. And that's a big deal. And that's a lesson that some drivers today still don't get right. how important the fans are, you know, and what they mean. And I just wanted to show you this, by the way, I brought my photo album. Oh yeah. Uh, Raleigh Beale, the 11 car. I'm going to flip right through this stuff. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be here all day if I don't. I got to get to the to the grit here. But I have all this stuff, Raleigh. And, yeah, that's the uh, three car. Yeah. yeah, yeah, rodeo bar car and Larry Dixon, Eldora, Eldora. <laughs> Larry's <laughs> trying, isn't he? Yeah, he's hunched over. <laughs> <laughs> what I say? Gil Hess lost his life at Salem. That's mm -hmm. Sammy Sessions, of course. Um, Johnny Parsons. Uh, Bill Vukovic sitting on his lap at Nazareth. That was a big moment for me. Mm -hmm. It's me and, and Bill Vukovic. But here you go. That was my first autograph from you. Oh, wow. 1971 mm -hmm. official program, mm -hmm. then your crash. And this, there's the car, and you, that's the autograph you gave yeah. to me. With my name on it this time. My name was Bubba. They called me Bubba. <laughs> you called me Bub. You don't remember, but that's okay. <laughs> Bub, best of luck, Merle Bettenhausen. You wrote that with your hook. All right. Yeah. Uh, well, that is that is so cool. But anyway, I started to say, I, I was trying to figure out how to sign autographs with one hand because you, you hand me a piece of paper or a book, I can't. Were you right-handed? Yes. Okay. So there's actually three of them. So you got two out of the three. <laughs> there's the right and the left and the hook. <laughs> yeah. So I thought, well, maybe if I put the hook in here and I, and I, 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 I worked them together like this, you know, just with moving the left hand and the, and, and the hook stay mostly stable. But the, actually, the, the, the hook autograph's better than the, the left hand. <laughs> I don't know about that. They're both precious to yeah, me. Yeah. They, they both really meant a lot to me, and they, and they still do today. Do you, um, so, so how do you fill your days these days? I mean, is it pretty low-key? Well, mean... up, up until COVID, I, 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 every Monday I volunteered to be a hospital for about eight hours. I would, I would go room to room and visitation and just... Talk to all the guys that were there, and and you know make conversation and and that kind of thing. And then I had a, another veterans group that met in Greenwood, down the, uh, where I used to work. And then uh, Wednesday I'd usually do something with uh, just a couple of buddies. And uh, weekend I got seven grandkids. I mean, there's five here and two and that's uh, plenty. Yeah, <laughs> and. Uh, and and then a lot of sporting events and there were football grandkids or football players and but but all my days start on my treadmill and that's and that, that's, you lay down a couple miles every day don't yeah, you yes uh -huh. mm -hmm. and, that's fantastic and I've been uh, a vegetarian you know like I say since but I haven't I haven't weighed as little as I weigh now I I don't ever remember weighing one hundred and fifty. Mm -hmm. And I was 149.6 this morning, and, uh, and I take one half a pill f for my heart skips a beat. I take no blood pressure, no cholesterol, nothing. That, that's Vitamin. largely attributed to your diet. But, yes. I mean, I wish I didn't love red meat and, and all that, because I firmly believe I do eat red meat. I do try to limit it, but I firmly believe that the less animal product we we take in right. the healthier we're going to be period the more you can stick to a plant-based diet i mean your blood pressure goes down you eliminate your sugar your cholesterol is not a problem not an issue I'll drink a i mean few pops during the day okay right. all right but, well, but you know we'll what else you off on when, that. the day i found out i had prostate cancer i have not had a piece of pie a piece of cake a, a piece of candy a dish of ice cream i have not had one bite of sugary substance. This is the only thing I, I, I do. I'd, I'd stay with that plan. Um, do you do you watch racing on TV? Do you care oh, anymore? Yeah. You, you... I watch it. Uh, uh, watch the beginning and watch the end, and 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 it's a good time to nap in the middle or go yeah, go shopping yeah. or or do something. But uh, yeah, I, I'm and I uh, and I did, went to Robin. You know, I don't know if you know, but Robin. As a racer lunch, and we ever heard of, but he has one on. Robin years. Miller. Robin Miller, he's had one for like fifteen years over here. He's an interesting character. He's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful man. He's I'd like to meet him. I'd like to interview him. I've I've never met Robin Miller. He doesn't even know I live, oh, but wow. but I'd like to interview him. Uh, that would be 
quite a story. You wouldn't, you'd probably have more to talk about with it. Well, I mean, the way he lets it all hang out. I mean, yeah. you want to talk about but cutting he's, to he's, the chase. He's, he's one of my dearest friends, and uh, and and I just, uh, but the, but but the week was pretty involved. It's not now, but you know what? I tell everybody. I, you know, I've been here for 23 years. I love this place. I mean, this. I mean. If I got, if you got to penalize me and make me stay somewhere, this is it for you. <laughs> yeah, it's very comforting. I like it here too. Yeah, I mean that's I, this is my, and I don't spend much time out here because I don't have, I don't, I don't invite a lot of people. I'm a, you know, I'm an outward going guy, but a very personal guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you can you can be alone and be okay. Absolutely. I'm, I'm the same that. way. I'm a loner, yeah, and my alone time is really important to me. Do you um? Is the Indianapolis 500 still the greatest race on planet Earth? Oh, yeah. No, it's there's... not the greatest race. It's the greatest event on planet Earth. Sure. I'm right with you. I'm right uh, with you. I mean, I know people have their uh, uh, taste and, and beliefs, and some people really love the Daytona 500, and the Daytona 500 is a very cool race. But the most prestigious, the most exciting, uh, with the most pageantry, the most history, the most tradition, the greatest event on Earth Yes. is always going to be the Indianapolis 500. Absolutely. For me, it's not right. even up yeah. for debate. Right. I mean, the, no it's problem. so Americana since 1911. I mean, yeah. come on. <laughs> what they need to, Daytona, is they need to run about 20 laps, which is start everybody, race, and then end it. And you don't need all those 180 laps in the middle. It's all just a formality. Yeah. Let's just run a 50 yeah, lapper just to and get, get to 200, to yeah. get to 500. I mean, because everything is is positioning early on. Who's got the muscle? Yeah. And then it's positioning to to, to be up front at the end. I mean, yeah, but no. you know what? Before I forget, did you know Bill Vukovic Senior? Yes. Wow. I really consider him the greatest Indy 500 driver of all time. Nobody led more laps in such a short space, 1952 through 1955. Right. Had he lived, he would have led a, and won a lot more. Yeah. He'd be the all-time winner right now. I don't think there was a, a greater Indy 500 driver in our history than Bill Vukovic Sr. I'm, I'm mesmerized by him. He should have won four years in a row. Right. He should have won 52, but broke now, right Grant, there. He came end. out with the Roadster, so he had a distinct advantage. That he did, first year. but you know that one year, what was it, 53, I think, when it was so hot... Yeah. And every driver in the field needed relief because it was too hot. You, when you're except leading, you Vuk don't need relief. Except Vukovic. Well, yeah, when you're leading, you don't, <laughs> you don't need. The, he, just, being one, you know, the, you, you you don't get tired. It's just. It's, you know, I'm going to uh, backtrack a little bit, not as far, but about 1970, I wanted to just briefly touch on this. Now, oh you know, when they took the Champ Dirt Car Series oh, away from the day. points. That was the worst thing that USAC ever did. Ever did. The downfall of IndyCar racing started at that exact moment when they took the dirt cars off the points about 1970-ish. The, the proof was in the drivers. You know, your A.J. Foyt, Mario Andretti, the Unsers, Rutherford, they continued to race at Springfield to Coin and the Hoosier 100 well into the mid and late 70s, even though the points didn't matter or count. Just but they loved it. That, just a couple of them. Did. But they did. Right. A lot of A.J. Foyt did. Yeah. And, uh, but, but, you know, you want to be a complete champion, and I, I want to see, you know, Will Power or Marco Andretti or Scott Dixon on the Springfield Mile Dirt um, well, Ducoin. I mean, th that that's what that thing is all about, the diversity and the versatility. Yep. I think they should right now say, you want to be the Indy car champion? Then you gotta, you're you going to run Springfield, Ducoin, and the Hoosier 100 every year. They can't do that in 2021. That schedule's already done, but they could do it in 2022, yeah, and they should do it. They're not going to, no. but they should. Well, if you remember, too, they they'd incorporated some road course races. So you ran... Ovals, road course races, and dirt races. Right. I think oh, well, Robin is. Robin would just. But would he be with because, me on this? Uh, oh yeah, he's he's. Oh he's, thank his God. His exact quote is you. That, that that everything everything started going down and they became prima donnas. Well, they got too big for their dirt track britches. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look at NASCAR. They uh, what are they doing this year? 
they're going to cover their pristine <laughs> Bristol Motor Speedway with mud. To make it dirt. <laughs> it took them 40 years to figure that out, right, that yeah. people want it. And you know what? And when the Indy 500 stars went away from Springfield and Coin, the audiences started oh, to trickle yeah, away. Yeah, well, you know, what? bring them back. Do you think the shows that that are put on by NASCAR or IndyCar, I mean, they're, they're, they're entertainers. I mean, that's what, what we do. And, and sometimes the entertaining part that we did years ago, you could get hurt or get killed. But it, but it, it, people came to watch. Now, it's, I, some guy said, you mean to tell me you'll spend all day, go 500 miles and end up where you started? I mean, what does that what does that prove? I mean, so just be a layman and think of that. Well, yeah, that is kind of crazy, isn't it? it is. so, I mean, <laughs> Start all, spend all day. I, well, I'm, I got new, you know Mario and AJ. They loved running those mile dirts, yeah. and they didn't. And I've talked to Al Unser about this. He was really upset when they took those yeah, okay, races away. <laughs> well, he was good at them, but he loved it, you know. Yeah. Well, and was, and that you couldn't when when those Indy five hundred stars were running the champ dirt cars at Springfield and Decoin, you could not find a seat. Oh, you were oh. right down to the rail when you could sit that close. Well, do you know that uh, now you could shoot a can Indy through the place. Was the number one paying race, and the Hoosier hundred was second. Yes. It should be that way now. Yeah, I want to see Scott Dixon back the, then at the, Decoin. The track. I, but, I'd tell those owners go buy a dirt car because they were going on the schedule in twenty twenty two. My second IndyCar race was 1970. And you you will remember this. Do you remember when the guy came and picked up the uh, the dirt car and and took it to Sacramento? 1970. That was my second dirt car race, and that was AJ Foyt's old car, and uh, your stepdad. Ron Kilman. Ron Kilman. Who know, just I, passed away. Uh, yeah, he told me that. Yeah, I, I, because I ran Springfield, uh, and uh, and then I and I was a big shot because I got I got experience. So I, and Willie K from New Zealand, my my buddy that I drove for when I went to New Zealand back in the late '60s, he picked the car up, and we, it was Tom Steiner and Willie K. It was three of us, and we poked it behind my blue station wagon, my famous blue. Chevy station wagon. We we went out to Sacramento and and I ran seventh. But the point I'm leading up to is that I remember getting lapped by Al Unzer, Okay, in the Viceroy car, I think it was. Yep. He won the race, and he had just flown in from winning Pocono. Wow. <laughs> and, and and that's think about if we could have those days again yeah, right. when Scott Dixon flew in from pick your place you yeah. know, and line up on the mild dirt. I mean, it would bring it all back around, and I think the, it would grow the fan base. I mean, the fans are now dictating what's going to go, and guys like, you know, sanctions like NASCAR are finally starting to catch on that... Uh,